Emily tries but misunderstands. Ooh, she's often inclined to borrow somebody's dreams till tomorrow. This particular album by the Pink Floyd, The Piper of the Gates of Dawn, has some very interesting sounds. These gentlemen you're about to meet are on their first visit to the United States. As a matter of fact, they've only been here uh, less than a week, as a matter of fact. Would you greet them warmly, please? The Pink Floyd! Got a flip top pack of cigarettes in the pocket, feeling good at the top, shopping at shop walking in the sunshine town, feeling very cool. But the butchers and the bakers and the supermarket stores getting everything she wants from the supermarket store. Apples and oranges. Apples and oranges. Cornering meekly, she trips up sweetly to meet the people. She's on time again. And then I catch her by the eye, then I stop and have to think what a funny thing to do, cause I'm feeling very big. And oranges and oranges I love she She loves me See you 
you might like to know. I'm a lorry driver man. She's on the run. Down by the riverside, feeding ducks in the afternoon time. Apples and oranges. Apples and oranges. Apples and oranges. Apples and Oranges, the latest release. Gentlemen, you know, pardon me, let me just sneak in here, sit tight. I don't think I've done an interview uh, without having chatted with any before, particularly people who've come about eight or 10,000 miles. You've only been here two days. There is one question that comes immediately to mind. When we go to visit your country, the fellows I know in our entertainment business always say, English food is unusual. What do you think of American food having eaten here for two days? Does it please you or displease you? Well, all we've had really is two cheeseburgers each, I think. <laughs> and, uh, That's not a, not a bad typical American dish. Does it sit well or did you not like it? It sat quite well. All right. Fair enough. You're very kind, I would say, if that's all you've had to eat so far. How long do you plan to stay with us? Uh, well, I think we're here for 10 days or now. Will you have an opportunity to see, uh, let me jump over here for a second, uh, other parts of the United States other than the West Coast? Um, we're going back to San Francisco and then we're going to New York. We'll stop in the Heat Ashbury and see what happens there. It's yeah. kind of an unusual spot. Would you be kind enough to introduce yourself and the other guys? I haven't had a chance to meet everybody. I'm Rick, and that's Nick. Nick up on drums, right? Nick, thank you. That's Sid, lead guitar. And Sid? And Roger, bass guitar. Thank you, Roger. Uh, Sid, did you write this? Yeah. I noticed on the album you wrote most of the songs. Is that true? Yeah, that's right. Let me wish you gentlemen all very good luck. I hope you enjoy your stay, get some sleep, and get something other than... Uh, Cheeseburgers during your stay. Thank you very much. Nick, nice to see you. Let me sit over here for a half a second. On old lane, I just
It's awfully considerate of you to think of me here And I'm most obliged to you for making it clear that I'm not here And I never knew the moon could be so big And I never knew the moon could be so blue And I'm grateful Pink Floyd. You're going to hear them in a minute, and I don't want to prejudice you. Hear them and see them first, and we'll talk about them afterwards. But four quick points I want to make before you hear them. The first is that what you heard at the beginning, that short bit, those few seconds, are really all I can hear in them, which is to say, to my mind, there is continuous repetition, and proportionately, they are a bit boring. My second point is that they are terribly loud. You couldn't quite hear that because, of course, from your sets, it isn't as loud as it is here in the studio and as it was in the festival hall in the Queen Elizabeth Hall on Friday. I will ask them about that when we come to talk. My third point is that perhaps I'm a little bit too much of a musician to fully appreciate them. And the reason why, that, why I say this is that, for they have an audience, and people who have an audience ought to be heard Perhaps it's my fault that I don't appreciate them.
Well, if I first may turn to Roger, I want to ask one fundamental question of which our televiewers may not be quite aware of the significance of it because they didn't hear <coughs> all of it. Why has it all got to be so terribly loud? For me, frankly, it's too loud. I just can't bear it. I happen to have grown up in the string quartet, which is a bit softer. So uh, why has it got to be so loud, so amplified? Well, I don't guess it has to be, but I mean, that's the way we like it. And uh, we didn't grow up with a string quartet, and I guess it could be one of the reasons why it is loud. I mean, it doesn't sound terribly loud to us. Yes, actually, not everybody who hasn't grown up in a string quartet turns into a loud pop group, so your reason is not altogether convincing. But I accept that you like it. What I'm saying is that if one gets immune to this kind of sound, one may find it difficult to appreciate softer types of sound. Sid, yes, no? I don't think that's so. No. Uh, w I mean, everybody listens. We don't need it very loud to be able to hear it, and some of it is very quiet. In fact. Right. I, I th personally, I like quiet music just as much as loud music. We play in large halls and things where, where obviously volume is necessary. And when people dance, they like uh, volume, you know, comes in uh, on its own. But uh, well, that's interesting. You see, when people dance, you did start, if I'm not mistaken, as a group which accompanied dancing. Is that it? Yeah, you could say that. And how did you turn into a concertizing group, if I may use the American term? Well, we've only done two concerts, in fact, yes. because the, the main scene with uh, pop music, which I guess is what we are at yes. the moment, is that uh, you play gigs around ballrooms and dance halls and this sort of scene, because that's how it works at the moment. But uh, we felt that there was no real reason, you know, why we shouldn't do a, an organized concert in a large hall where people came and sat and actually listened to what we do. Because uh, dance halls, generally speaking, are, are not very good places to actually listen to the music. Most people come along, 